Kunjabihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janapalapa Gidi Vadadhari Gopi Janapalapa Gidi Vadadhari So the Nandana Praja Janna Ranjana Jaso the Nandana Praja Janna Ranjana Jamuna Tira Panachari Jamuna Tira Panachari Jaya Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Gopi Janna Pallapa Gidi Padadhari Gopi Janna Pallapa Gidi Padadhari Jaso the Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Jaso the Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Panachari Jamuna Tira Panasari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Om Agyan Timidan Dasya Jnanjana Salakaya Umbilitam Jina Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Tadadiswa Padantikam 
Bande ham Sri Guru Sri Juta Padakamalam Sri Guru Vishnavam Scha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunapan Bidam Tam Sajivam Savaitam Sapadutam Padijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Kopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Anchakalpatadubhyascha Kripasindubhya Evacha Patitanam Bhavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Ananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasati Gaura Bhakta Brinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna I welcome you <coughs> to Sri Radha Gopinath Temple for our Sunday festival thank you for being with us I just come a few minutes back from a very wonderful event the American Medical Council and Bhaktivedant Hospital together arranged in Worley area for a gathering entitled Spirituality in Medicine. <clears throat> and interest, the doctors didn't know how many people would come because they sent invitations to surgeons, and doctors, administrators of hospitals. How many are really concerned enough to spend a Sunday discussing spirituality in the medical world? So many people were enthusiastic that they actually, way ahead, they had to close the registration. And the hall was completely filled with very influential doctors. There were many talks. There were some dramas. There was a debate and prasad. I was thinking of the beautiful song by Thakur Bhakti Vinod where he quotes Lord Chaitanya. Enechi ashadi maya nashi baro lagi hari nama maha mantra lao to me magi that I have come with the medicine that can cure the very root cause of all suffering. When we think of it, why is it that we don't like to be diseased? Disease in itself is not really 
what we're resistant to. Suffering. People do not like to suffer because it is against the nature of the Atma, the soul, to suffer. <clears throat> the soul is Satchit Ananda, eternal, full of knowledge and full of happiness. But when the eternal, blissful soul, due to the ahankar, the false ego, identifies with this ever-changing mind and this vulnerable physical body, then the soul is subjected to identifying with suffering. Ananda mayo bhyashat. Every living being is seeking pleasure because that is our inherent nature. It is described that for the eternal soul to be <clears throat> identifying with these physical elements as the self and trying to find happiness through that is like a fish trying to find happiness on the hot, dry sand. You can give some pleasure to the fish. You could massage it. You can put a very, very beautiful female fish next to him. You can give the fish a nice house elegant jewelry, and the fish may get some pleasure from that, but no real happiness, because the fish is outside of its natural element, which is the water. Similarly, Jivara Swarupoy Krishna Nitya Das, the scriptures tell us we are all eternally the servants of the supreme, all-attractive, all-loving Lord. And to feel God's love, Krishna's love, and to reciprocate with our love, that is happiness that is beyond death. It is above all of the flickering pleasures, pains, and dualities of this world. The world is composed of dualities. Success, failure, honor, dishonor, pleasure, pain, happiness, distress, victory, defeat, health, disease. One side of the dualities <coughs> gives us a sense of pleasure and the other suffering. But they are inseparable. You can't have one without the other. Why? Because just as it's the nature of the soul, the atma, to be happy within ourselves, it's the nature of material existence, galaya mashashvatam, that everything is changing, nothing is stable. And we attach ourselves to something, and it's going to be lost. And death will come to our loved ones, to ourself. It's inevitable. <clears throat> Whoever we are, you can't buy a solution to that. You cannot bribe a solution to that even in India. <laughs> of all places. Where for bribes you can practically get anything. But you cannot rise above death or suffering, whoever we are. Like a fish, on the dry sand. When the fish forgets 
that his or her home is actually in the water. Then the fish s flaps around endlessly trying to find pleasure and trying to find relief from pain. Yada, yada, hidaramasya glani rabhavati bharata. The Supreme Lord has descended again and again and again throughout history in many places and reveals holy books and empowers his holy agents, the saints, holy people to remind us your place is in the water. Srila Prabhupada, he often used this phrase, come back home, back to Godhead. To understand Krishna within our heart, to understand our own eternal relationship with Krishna is our home. It's within us. It's everywhere if we only connect. And Lord Chaitanya came out of compassion, seeing our endless suffering, and came with this medicine that can reconnect us to our eternal nature, our eternal home. And that medicine is the holy name of the Lord. Especially there are many mantras sound vibrations which liberate the mind from suffering by giving the mind refuge and shelter in the all blissful loving pastimes of the Supreme Lord. And of all the many, many mantras described in the scriptures, the Kali Santarana Upanishad declares that there is a Maha Mantra which includes all other mantras which is the perfect medicine according to this age of Kali that could bring down the fever of material selfishness and ego and bring us to our natural health. Prema Bhakti. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. So Lord Chaitanya came as a doctor. He wasn't doing it as a profession to earn money. He was doing it out of compassion. And this is a problem that we see in this world. People are misdirected. Our Madhavananda Prabhu, the director of Bhaktivedanta Hospital, during his talk, he quoted Albert Einstein from some book that he read, where he said that this, the Western civilization has created an incredible boat but it lacks a compass. <laughs> you can be in a beautiful ocean liner with all sorts of facilities, but the purpose of the boat is to take you somewhere. But unfortunately, our civilization doesn't really know where it wants to go or where it's supposed to go. Srila Prabhupada quotes from the Srimad Bhagavatam that this human life is like a ship, a boat, and the Guru is like the captain of the boat, and the Vedas are like the favorable breezes that under the 
direction of the captain actually pushes us forward to the destination we really want to achieve. Money, power, fame, they're all flickering sources of misery, according to the Bhagavad Gita. Very beautifully explained by Krishna. They are sources of misery. The pleasures in this world, that is how they are defined. Because they have a beginning and an end. Nashato vidite bhavo. A wise person understands there's something more. Whatever our occupation, our success and fulfillment, according to the Bhagavat, is some Siddhir Haritoshana, that Krishna is pleased with us. But here we find, as per the conference today, in the medical industry, how many people really are doctors, nurses, administrators of hospitals and so forth, out of deep love and compassion to help to liberate people from suffering. And how many do it caught up by the passions of selfish ego, thirst for more and more money. No matter how much fame, fortune, Gita tells it's like a fire. It demands more and more. The more you feed a fire, the hungrier and hotter it gets. No cessation. We have a body, we have a mind, and we have a soul. The body is a sacred instrument in the human form of life for self-realization. Srila Prabhupada signed every one of his letters. I hope this letter meets you in good health. <coughs> what is that good health? Srila Prabhupada was speaking the highest philosophy and giving the ultimate blessing in this simple phrase. I hope this letter meets you in good health. It's not just the words. It's the intention. A person's intention pierces our heart. A person's intention is what actually connects to Krishna. If somebody says something nice to us because they want something from us, it doesn't touch the heart. But if they say it out of true love and concern, it does touch the heart. Srila Prabhupada's intention when he says, I hope this beats you in good health, he's speaking about the body, the mind, and the soul. The body is an instrument by which we can utilize our time for the highest purpose. So Srila Prabhupada was very, very concerned with the health of his devotees. Physical health. 
and emotional health to be happy. We should be happy in devotional service. But ultimately all for the purpose, our physical health and emotional, mental health should be in harmony with what's healthy for the true self, the Atma, the soul. I hope this meets you in best of health. Was Prabhupada's blessing that on every level we could experience the infinite love and grace of Krishna and be happy beyond birth, beyond death. Srila Prabhupada quoted his own guru that intelligence means whatever we do and whatever we speak. We're investing in happiness. Not in just, not only in this temporary body that could die at any moment, but beyond death. Because after all, how long do we have? But the soul is eternal. We should be investing in the eternal well-being of our soul and the eternal well-being of other souls. This is compassion. Where there is actual, true devotion to God, it will naturally manifest as unselfish compassion toward all living beings. The greatest need within the world today and at all times. Lord Chaitanya had a devotee named Murari Gupta. He was an incarnation of Hanuman. Hanuman was one of the great doctors of history. (laughs) I didn't tell the story at the conference because it was kind of a formal event. (coughs) But we're pretty informal here, so I'll tell it. (laughs) Lakshman was seriously injured. He was really like in the ICU. (laughs) What do they call it? In America, it's the emergency war. Uh, Here, I think it's called the casualty. Well, he was struck by the javelin of Ravana. And he was laying on the ground. There was no breath. There was no pulse. There was no sign of life. Sri Ram was embracing him. And even in those days, there were doctors. So Jambavan and others brought the doctor of the monkeys. And he looked at Lakshman and He said there is a particular herb that is high in the Himalayan mountains. It's called Sanjeevani. And if we administer this herb to Hanumanji, then it could cure him. It could save his life. Now, it wasn't in those days that there was a cell phone that you'd call somebody and... (laughs) up in the Himalayan mountains because they're in South India. This is in Sri Lanka, not even South India. It's the island. But you see, they didn't need cell phones then. Hanumanji, Jambavan said, Hanuman, you can do it. Go. So Hanuman said, yes. 
So he jumped. In one leap, he went to the mountain. He was so sincere, so dedicated. Can you, ima can you imagine Hanuman's consciousness? How totally absorbed he was. Here is his beloved Lakshman. Non different than Ram himself, the Lord of his life, who was laying there about to die. And his beloved Lord Ram was weeping and crying in anguish to see his brother in that state. Hanuman's only purpose in life was to give pleasure to Ram. The way to transcend the miseries of this world is simply to try to resolve what displeases the Lord. In Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Lord Chaitanya was in anguish telling Haridas Thakur that it breaks my heart to see all the people in this world trying to be happy without Krishna and therefore suffering birth, old age, disease, and death. What can we do? And Haridas Thakur told the Lord, you have descended in, in this beautiful incarnation to give the medicine of your holy name. And Haridas Thakur risked his life, his everything to give that name to the world. Knowing the heart of the Lord. Hanuman was absolutely absorbed. Nothing could stop him. Because of his total fixed devotion, Krishna tells him, to those who are on this path of true bhakti, they are resolute in purpose. Their aim is one. Bhakti is not just a sentiment of let me add a little bit of devotion to God to all of the rest of my life. The true path of bhakti is to be resolute, fixed in our purpose, absorbed in pleasing the Lord through our seva. Yes, Hanuman jumped. It wasn't the strength of his legs that brought him a thousand miles. <clears throat> it was absorption in Ram that empowered him with Ram's grace. And therefore, there was no limit. And when he couldn't find the, the, the herb in the mountain, he understood that this is an emergency situation. He lifted the entire mountain. Again, it wasn't the strength of his arms that uprooted an entire mountain. It was his love for Ram that empowered him to do that. The impossible. And he came back and administered the herb. And Lakshman got up. Not only did he get up, he was completely free from any wound or any inconvenience. And Sri Ram embraced Hanuman with such happiness. Now Hanuman, <coughs> he, didn't act, he didn't have Ram and Lakshman go to the receptionist to get a bill. He didn't ask Ram and Lakshman to see their insurance card. <laughs> it was out of compassion. Real compassion is, you know, people may get paid for what they do because some people have to make a living in this world. But the actual compassion is beyond the pay when you really, actually, genuinely care to serve.
Murari Gupta and Lord Chaitanya's Leela. He was a doctor, an Ayurvedic doctor. And he was a very, very great devotee. Sometimes Lord Chaitanya would make fun of him. He would say, Murari, what are you doing studying scriptures? You should just go go in the forest and pick some herbs and, and roots and make some medicine. But then at other times, Lord Chaitanya said that Murari Gupta may appear to the ordinary society to be a doctor because he's practicing medicine very similar to every other doctor. But his motivation is to heal the body, the mind, and the soul. Therefore, he is a completely transcendental person. <coughs> and he has conquered the heart of the Supreme Lord by his compassion. And just to show his favor to Marari, one day Marari Gupta came to Srivas Thakur's house. Lord Chaitanya was sitting with Lord Nityananda. Marari Gupta bowed down to Lord Chaitanya, then bowed down to Lord Nityananda. Lord Chaitanya said, Marari, what are you doing? He said, why did you bow down to me first and Nityananda after? You are supposed to be a great devotee of the Lord. And you are supposed to be teaching the world by the example, the proper etiquette of respect. Marari Gupta didn't understand what the Lord was talking about. He said, my Lord... He said, whatever you induce me to do within my heart is what I do. <laughs> and he went home and went to sleep. And he had a dream. In this dream, he saw Lord Nityananda, tran transcendentally effulgent, he looked like a cowherd boy. He was holding a plow. And Marari Gupta understood that Lord Nityananda is Balaram. He revealed himself as Lord Balaram as he was watching in total ecstasy. He happened to see Lord Chaitanya walking behind Lord Nityananda. And the Lord smiled at him and said, You see, he is my older brother. <laughs> then both Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda smiled and the dream disappeared. So Marari Gupta woke up and went back to Srivas Thakur's house. And there Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda were sitting next to each other. And Murari Gupta offered obeisances. He bowed down first to Lord Nityananda and then to Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya said, Murari, why are you doing like this now? <laughs> and Murari said, I am just doing what you are making me do. <laughs> and Lord Chaitanya was very happy. And Gadadhar gave Lord Chaitanya some chewing spices. Lord Chaitanya chewed on the spices for some time, then took them out of his mouth and handed them to Marari Gupta because he was so pleased with Marari Gupta. So Marari, Marari in great ecstasy, he took the spices covered by the Lord's saliva from his mouth and he ate it. And then... Lord Chaitanya said, now go run and wash your hands. Marari took his hand and wiped it on top of his own head. And the Lord said, 
Why did you do that? You're supposed to be an example teaching people proper etiquette? <laughs> that spices came out of my mouth. They're contaminated. You should wash your hands while you put it on top of your head. And Murari Gupta was in ecstasy. He was so happy. And then the Lord revealed to Murari Gupta that you have understood that the body of the Lord is absolutely pure. Ishwara Parama Krishna Satchit Ananda Vigra Anadir Adir Govinda Sarava Karana Karanam. that Krishna, his form, his pastimes, his names, his abode, they are eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss. Om apavitra apavitro va sarvavastam gatopiva yasmaret pundrikaksham sabhaya bhyantara suchi The Lord is all pure and everything about Krishna is all pure. He is pavitra. And by coming in contact with Krishna in the proper attitude in any aspect of Krishna, we become purified. By remembering his pastimes, by chanting his names, by serving his devotees, by seeing his beautiful form on the altar. Because Krishna is all pure. And Lord Chaitanya was so satisfied with Marari Gupta because he understood this. Murari Gupta was so happy. He was so happy. He went home. And his good wife, she had prasad for him. And Murari Gupta said, just give me rice and ghee. He was sitting on the floor. <clears throat> he was so intoxicated by taking the Lord's remnants and putting it on his head and eating them and seeing how the Lord was so pleased with him. He was completely out of this world. He was in ecstasy. He didn't know what he was doing or why he was doing. He was just filled with love. His wife gave him some rice, and he mixed the rice with ghee, and he put it out in his hand like this, and said, Krishna, eat, eat. And then he'd throw it on the floor. Then, he'd ask, then his wife would bring him more rice and he'd put it, mix it with ghee. <laughs> Krishna, eat, eat, throw it on the floor. His wife understood that her husband was an extraordinary person, but this was really extraordinary behavior. <laughs> <clears throat> more and more rice she brought, more and more he just mixed it with ghee and eat, eat, threw it on the floor. He wasn't eating anything himself. And she was saying, please, you know, chant, you're chanting Krishna's names and you're offering Krishna rice, but I've never seen offerings like this. And he would just <laughs> eat, eat, and throw it. <laughs> the next day, early in the morning, Lord Chaitanya came right to Murari Gupta's house. This was something very, very rare. And Marari Gupta said, why have you come here so early after bowing down to the Lord? And Lord Chaitanya said, because I have indigestion. <laughs> he said, what is it that you ate yesterday that made you have indigestion this morning? Lord Chaitanya said, what is it that I ate? I ate what you gave me. <laughs> you were taking the rice and mixing it with so much ghee and then throwing it on the floor. And I ate all of it because it was offered with such ecstatic devotion and emotion. And now I have indigestion <laughs> because you made me eat so much. Then Lord Chaitanya said, I know what the cure is for indigestion. Drinking water, special water. And then he said, 
And then Lord Chaitanya took Marari Gupta's cup of water that he had been drinking from. Very sweet. <laughs> and Lord Chaitanya drank the water that was drunk by Marari Gupta, and he was completely happy. He was now cured from his indigestion. This is the reciprocation of love. And it's also a lesson to the world. <coughs> because Murari Gupta had such faith to accept the prasad of Lord Chaitanya. That one's not so sweet. <laughs> Any more, and we will get indigestion. <laughs> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was eager and hungry to taste the remnants of his devotee, to taste the love of his devotee. Yes, Marari Gupta appeared to be an ordinary doctor in this world who was very humble. He never posed himself as a saint or an acharya. He just loved to serve. But the supreme absolute truth, the husband of Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, the ultimate source of Shiva, who is the destroyer of the universe, the ultimate source of Brahma, the creator of the universe, the ultimate source of Vishnu, the pr pr protector of the universe, the ultimate source of the Virat Rupa, the, the universal form who showed himself eating the universe in the form of time. He was hungry to drink the water and the simple cup of his devotee. That is the power of devotion, power of bhakti. And that power is within all of us. It is our constitutional nature. In this material existence, we are endlessly distracted by soul, by unlimited forms. The mind is conditioned, habituated to be distracted. Here we have Krishna the source of all beauty, the source of all strength and knowledge and fame and wealth and renunciation. Rupa Goswami tells us that if once tasting Krishna, we can never, ever, ever again be attracted to any of the things of this mortal world. That doesn't mean that we become callous to the world. It may become, means we become instruments of Krishna's compassion within this world. We're callous to the propensity to exploit this world. 
And Krishna's before us in the name, in the form, in the seva, in the Vaishnavas. But still the mind is so habitually distracted. We are bombarded by the weapons of mass distraction. And satsang, association of devotees, helps us to focus our minds, to focus our words and our actions, our very lives on that which connects us to Krishna. Paramdrishvani Vartate, the higher taste. It's what everyone is seeking. Vishayavani Vartante Niraharas Yadehina Rasa Varajamarasopyasya Paramdrishvani Vartate. These distractions are so powerful, and we have been conditioned for so long to taking shelter of them. But we can rise above them when we experience a higher taste. Daivihesu gunamai, mama maya turatyaya, mame gamye prapadyante mayam etaturantite. This is the higher taste. Experiencing the shelter of Krishna. material existence with these three modes is very, very difficult to overcome. Maya is all-powerful. But if we take shelter of the Lord, we can easily cross beyond it. What does it mean to take shelter of the Lord? It simply means to open our hearts to receive and reciprocate with the grace of the Lord. Even the greatest ascetics like Vishwamitra, Sobari, they could perform such tapasya and they could live for so long they could fast for years. They could expose themselves to the heat of the sun. They could submerge themselves for years at a time in the icy waters of the Ganga in the peaks of the Himalayas. Any one of us we would get sick and die within days if we tried to do what they did for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. But still, despite their unbelievable self-control, mind control, they got distracted until they took shelter of the Supreme Lord. When they took shelter of the Supreme Lord, then by the grace of the Lord, we get that higher taste. We cannot achieve the higher taste. We cannot attain the higher taste. But if we are sincere, that higher taste is given to us. And that is grace. And what is the nature of that higher taste? Nadanam na janam na sundarim kavitam va jagadisha kamaye mama janamani janmani shwari bhavata bhakti rohoi takitva. The highest revelation of the absolute truth. The result of receiving the most intimate grace of the Lord, Lord Chaitanya expresses in this verse. 
that I do not want any amount of wealth. I do not want the beautiful companionship of the opposite sex. I do not want fame or prestige or followers or incredible skills. I do not even want liberation from suffering. I only want to serve you, my Lord, unconditionally. Anywhere and everywhere will you want me to serve. And it, if it's your desire, even birth after birth after birth. Narayana para sarave, nakutash janavibhyate. Lord Shiva, <coughs> who is transcendentally liberated, topmost Vaishnava, he recognized this quality in Chitraketu. Chitraketu, for a very simple mistake that he was misunderstood, he made a little mistake, but he was very misunderstood in his motives. Still, he was cursed to die and become a demon. And he gratefully accepted it. My Lord, wherever you want me to serve, I'm happy to serve. Lord Shiva, he proclaimed this verse to Parvati. Just see the nature of a devotee of Narayan. Whether he is in heaven, whether he's on earth, whether he's in Vaikuntha, the spiritual world, or whether he's in hell, it makes no difference. He's happy just to serve anywhere. That's the higher taste. That's the higher taste of prema or love. The greatest treasure in all of creation, the greatest treasure beyond this creation forever. is the attitude to serve with love. Because in that service, yegatamam prapadyante tams tatayva pajamya. We please Krishna. There's nothing higher. There's no aspiration greater. That is love. Even in this world, a mother is willing to suffer for her child. And if the mother's suffering in the service of the child and the child smiles, a loving mother will feel very happy. She won't consider her own inconvenience. She'll just see my child is smiling. That's our nature. It's the nature of love. And bringing that to the highest dimension of the love of the soul. The greatest of all treasures is the opportunity to serve. And our beloved Gurudev Srila Prabhupada, he has given us infinite opportunities to serve. Whether doctors or business people or whether we're brahmacharis, teachers, swamis, that higher taste is there. But we must be convinced of it and try to transcend all the distractions by keeping ourselves well connected with satsang, association of devotees who help keep us fixed on the true aspiration and the true 
method of reaching that aspiration. The sadhana and the sadhya is the same. To serve with unselfish love and to chant the holy names. Thank you very much. Now we will have Kirtan.